What's up, guys? David here. 1202, it's List Day. Ah, uh, yes, List Day. Today, we're continuing our series of looking at the best cards in every main set of the game. And today is a monumentous day in this series of top tens. Why you say that? Well, because today we are looking at Generation Force. Generation Force is the set that introduced us to the XC monsters, meaning that we are finally getting that much more closer to what modern Yu-Gi-Oh actually looks like. We're making headway here, boys. XCs are my favorite extra deck summoning mechanic, and the community really did adopt them pretty well because they are still a relevant extra deck summoning mechanic to this day. This set not only gave us those black cards, but also gave us a couple of really cool decks in order to make them, introducing us to things like wind-ups and, uh, Crash bugs. We also got the uh, the weird banish fish thing. That's fun. But anyway, without further ado, Generation Force. Number 10 is Mask Change. It is a little funny that uh, the first card we're talking about in a list about the first XE set is a basically a quick play polymerization for a fusion monster, but very... <laughs> Trust me, there are some black cards on here. This quick play spell allows you to send one hero monster you control to the graveyard to special summon a masked hero monster from your extra deck that is the same attribute as the monster sent. Given that heroes are the one of the most widely supported archetypes in the game, this thing has no shortage of targets that go on the field as well as targets in its extra deck in order to make. If you can play dark hero monsters, you might be playing mask change for reasons. <laughs> The reason I'm putting it at number 10 here, though, is there's a, another hero card. I try to keep archetypal cards, one per list, but there is two really important ones, so I'm, I'm going to spread them out. But also, at this point in time, we don't have a lot of good targets for it. I think Goka and Vapor were the only ones that came out in this set, so at the, mo at the moment, they're all bad. But we will get Dark Law and things like that later, and that, that's important. I told you, though, we're starting to look like Mount or New Gyo. Certainly, like, <laughs> certainly looking like Dual Links. And speaking of Duel Links, number 17, Leviathan Dragon. Leviathan the Dragon. Not only was he one of the first XC monsters in real Yu-Gi-Oh, he is actually one of the first XC monsters we had in Duel Links. Uh, makes some kind of sense given what this thing does. It's a rank 3 that starts off with 2k attack, and once per turn you can detach a material from it to raise its attack by 500, meaning in two turns you get a 3k beater. If it doesn't have material though, it can't attack directly, so it's not a perfect beater. But it is was actually one of the biggest XC monsters we could potentially get for actually quite a while. XC monsters seem to have a 2500 attack ceiling for the longest time, especially for anything rank 4 or lower. It was, I don't know why they decided to do that. Maybe they felt that XCs are pretty easy to make. You don't even have to do any addition like we do with Synchros. It's just two likes leveled monsters, meaning it's they are pretty easy to do. So maybe they tried to make sure that they weren't too strong in attack power wise because a lot of them had pretty good effects. But Leviathan Dragon, nope, he's just a beat stick. However, at this point in the game, it was a toss-up whether or not you'd call rank 3 or rank 4 better. Uh, it looks like rank 3 initially was actually much better, especially the fact that last set we got Tour Guide from the Underworld. And we got a pretty solid black monster go into with Leviathan Dragon. Although, not to be outdone, the rank 4s did come out of the gate swinging with Steel Swarm Roach. Steel Swarm Roach is a bit of an odd card, given the fact that the Steel Swarms are like a... They're basically boneless monarchs. They're a tribute summon archetype. It's incredibly disrespectful. They gave us a rank 4 XC for their support. That's a little strange. However, his effect kind of makes sense given it's a tribute summon deck. During either player's turn, when a level 5 or higher monster would be special summoned, you can detach one material from this card, and if you do, negate the summon and destroy the card. It seems like Konami was giving us a tool to make sure those synchro decks that have been the primary summoning mechanic for the last couple of formats are going to have a hard time dealing with those new black cards because our rank 4 here out of the gate is one that's pretty much tailored in order to stop synchro summoning. Uh, he sees play in and out of style for quite a few formats going forward. It's just a really, really handy card to have. And he isn't even the only Ill Swarm XC monster rank 4 we will ever see on one of these lists in a top 10. They only get better. Oh boy. This next one is a favorite card of mine, especially if you are out camping and you brought your guitar with you. Anyway, here's Wonder Wand. 
this equip spell can only be stuck to a spellcaster monster. It gives it 500 attack power. whoop de freaking do If you control the equipped monster and this card, you can send this card to the graveyard and the equipped monster to draw two cards. It's a two for two. Not too bad. Especially given the fact that, like, you know, we're in the Xiera, spell books are on the horizon. This is, you know, this is the kind of, this thing's kind of their jam, you know what I mean? So, like, we're getting ready for that. It's generic spellcaster support, which is pretty impressive given how late this set is in the history of the game, just to get blanket uh, type support. Pretty solid. And it's a draw card. Nice. Nice. Being an equip spell means it's kind of searchable, not great, but there is options to get to it, and most of them aren't out yet, but even still, they are there. And it comes in ultimate rare, and it looks really cool. It's a damn shame they don't let you just equip this to your opponent's spellcaster monster and then send those to the graveyard and draw two cards. It's a damn shame, because that would have been really good. <laughs> but as it is, it's still a really solid draw card, and the 500 attack boost could come in clutch sometimes. Definitely saw play. The next one is another favorite card of mine in this set, Surface. I wonder if you guys can guess in the comments below as to why. Target one level three or lower fish, sea serpent, or aqua monster in your graveyard, special summon it in defense mode. This thing's not once per turn. Pretty solid. Obviously nowadays we got Monster Reborn back, so this thing's not nearly as good as it was when it came out, because Monster Reborn is constantly going in and off the ban list, but it is certainly a solid option, especially for decks like Frogs, the decks that I like to play, because Doof Frogs got 2k defense. It's also really good for your boy Tiny Turtle. <laughs> I've played this card many a time. Again, we got another really solid generic buy type support card in a rather late era Yu-Gi-Oh set. This Generation Forest is actually really, really good. Okay, so the next slot is like a twofer because these cards are kind of seen as like light dark counterparts. Tyrus, the Keeper of Genesis, and uh, Ardrus, the Keeper of Armageddon. Both of these are rank 5 XE monsters. One a dark fiend, the other a light fairy type. What's Tyrus do? This card's effect is only applied while it has materials. Okay, cool. Cannot be destroyed by card effect. <laughs> Whoa. This is actually pretty novel because this is the first set of Xyz and we already got a relatively easily made extra deck monster that has some sort of inherent protection to it, just a blanket not affected by something. That is actually pretty solid. At the end of the battle phase, if this card attacked or was attacked, you can destroy one card your opponent controls. Pretty solid effect. The downside here is during your end phase, you gotta detach something from it. You know, they gotta balance it. It's an early XE card. It can't just be blanketly good. And presumably, once it loses all materials, all this stuff gets turned off, and then it's just a 2600 beater. So your opponent's gotta wait it out, kind of like a uh, prototype Rongo. No offense, but I think it's kind of gross. And then we have Ardus here, and he's pretty much the same monster, except for the fact that he's uh, just a dark, but his effect is slightly different. Once per turn, you can detach a material from him to destroy one card on the field. That's really, really strong. Sure, it's not a quick effect, you can't use it during your opponent's turn, so, uh, you know, it's it's has a bit of a different use than Tyrus, but you do not need to attack or be attacked in order to get its effect off, it's just an at-will destruction. They have a very similar effect each, but they serve a slightly different function. This thing's a bit easier to use, but it doesn't have the blanket protection the other one does, so it's a bit of give or take. So I stuck them both on here because they're kind of like different sides of the same coin. So I'm starting to think that maybe Ryan meddled with this list a little bit because the next card sounds like something he might have added. Goblinburg. Goblinburg is a fair choice for the list, and it's certainly better than something like Peking Goblin. <laughs> However, it is scoring a little high, don't you think, Ryan? I guess I have to give it to him, though. It is a perfect XC enabling card. When this card is normal summon, you can special summon one level four or lower monster from your hand, then you change this thing to defense position. Obviously, you can use it for a synchro play by cheesing a tuner out of your hand and then going into like some like a level seven synchro play or something, but clearly the intended function was to go like Goblinburg into another level four overlay for a rank four play. It's, it's, it's a, it's a starter for your new summoning mechanic. Being a level four earth warrior monster with under 1500 attack and zero defense means there is tons of ways to find this card and get to this card and special summon this card and get it back on the field once you've used it. It is a very, very well constructed card to simply be an easily obtainable body over and over and over. It's probably like the best goblin card there really is. We just need a dedicated goblin deck. I am not being coerced to say that.
Number three is Wind Up Magician. Wind Up Magician is a fantastic card and one of the major pieces in the Wind Up hand loop. Wind Ups were introduced in this set, but we didn't get Hunter yet, so you couldn't really do it. But out of the gate, they are at least a competent XC deck, simply because Wind Up Magician, uh, it, it summons a, a Wind Up from your deck. What could you want? If the effect of a Wind Up monster is activated, you can activate this thing's effect to summon a Wind Up from your deck. This effect can only be used once while this card is faced up on the field. <laughs> there are ways around that thing. I have no idea why they decided to word this card this way. It is not a real hard once per turn. And as long as you can get this thing off the field and put it back on the field, you can keep using its effect. It's just one of those cheesily worded cards. Had this card been like a hard once per turn, or maybe Hunter was, we wouldn't have had the wind up loop and the party boat wouldn't still be on the ban list for some reason. But that makes two monsters in the wind up archetype that can just summon from the deck. Seems pretty powerful, especially when Yu-Gi-Oh is starting to simply turn into how many bodies can I get on the board. They don't actually need to do anything, they just need to be bodied. And this is certainly doing that. All right, number two is Levier the Sea Dragon. Levier the Sea Dragon is an interesting card because it's neither of the sea nor it is a dragon. It is a wind aqua, not a water dragon. I don't know. Fucking idiot. I think it's a, it's clearly supposed to be part of that uh, banish fish deck. I don't know why it's not a fish or a sea serpent. I, I think that was the, the original intent of this card was to be part of that jank deck, but okay, fine. What does this bad boy do? <laughs> loops, baby, loops. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card to special summon one of your level four or lower banished monsters to your side of the field. That's pretty loose in its restrictions of what you can do with it. <laughs> Go figure, it's almost like this is a combo extender. And being that it is in your extra deck means it's, as long as your deck is putting cards in the banished pot, and you can make a rank 3 XC play, you have access to that banished monster. Levier has seen plenty of play in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh because every once in a while the chips in a deck align perfectly so this thing just becomes a brilliant extender option. I remember playing this in Cosmos. That was fun. <laughs> oh, it was stupid in that deck. All right, so our honorable mention is a weird one, but it's double or nothing. This quick play spell card says when a monster's attack is negated, you can play this card, target that monster, it can make a second attack during the battle phase, and its attack becomes double its current uh, attack during the damage step only. All right, so that's a, a pretty specific activation condition for what otherwise would be a pretty solid game ending card. Uh, how are you supposed to use this one, Dave? Uh, well, you're supposed to use it with Utopia Double. Utopia Double literally, as a quick effect, searches this thing, adds it to your hand, and then special summons, like, OG Utopia on top of itself. And then you use the Utopia monster to attack, have it negate its own attack, play the double or nothing, boost its attack up to, like, quadruple at this point or some hooey, and then, <laughs> for Game Boy Advanced. Obviously, at this point in time, we don't have Utopia Double, so it's not quite as powerful as it could be, but it is certainly waiting in the wings for that just super nifty little game-ending combo. Our dishonorable engine is Gem Elephant. Gem Elephant looks like it's probably supposed to be a Crystal Beast support, but it's actually like, like Gem Knight support for some reason. During your main phase, you can return this face of card to your hand, period. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Hey kid, did you ever waste your normal summon? No. Would you like to? It has, must have something to do with Gem Knights. I don't know the decks that well. It's a giant wombo combo, so maybe you guys could enlighten me as to why you'd ever want to do this. I have, a, I have a sneaking suspicion you don't, but it does have another effect. During damage calculation, okay. If this card attacked or was attacked, you can send one normal monster from your hand to the graveyard. This card gains a thousand defense. What? At 400 attack, it's not doing any of the attacking, so we can pretty much rule that out. But it does have 1900 defense, so presumably you, you set it, and your opponent attacks into it, and you're like, Surprise! Send Gem Knight Garnet to my graveyard! You just took a, a couple of damage. And now that it's face up on my field, I can return it to my hand so I can then set it to let you get fooled again? Wow, your opponent has got to be an absolute moron. And even if they were that dumb to attack it twice, it's it's bad hand advantage, and, it, and it's not even doing that much damage to you. This card's stupid. I honestly have no idea what you're supposed to do with this. It, it's really bad. If it sent the normal monster from your deck to the graveyard, I guess there'd be some, some really niche use for it in, like, 
Wow, I don't know. But th there's a function to that, I suppose. But handier graveyards, that's just bad advantage. That's terrible. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to MetaMat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. And number one, also currently at one, A Hero Lives. A Hero Lives is one of the reasons why hero decks are good and have been consistently an okay rogue strategy for a very long time and even meta at certain points in the history of the game because not only are they all warriors, so they benefit from things like, you know, reinforcements of the army, good generic warrior support. They also have things like mass change, number 10, and this one, number one. This normal spell card says, if you control no face-up monsters, pay half your life points, special summon one elemental hero monster from your deck to the field. Woof! Half your life points. Seems pretty steep. But, uh, half your life points to get Shadow Mist on board, to search your, your, your mass change, and then you play the mass change to get the Dark Claw, then you're freaking golden! Ah! Impossible! But that's a bit of an anachronistic thing that we didn't have Shadow Mist yet at this point. However, uh... You know, that just summoning a, a monster from your deck is an extremely powerful effect, and it is worth half your life points. I can't believe there is decks where you can just do that for free. It's crazy. And when you have things like Elemental Hero Stratos, which are just, you know, it's just a really good card. Like, he's a good card. Teasing him out of your deck for, you know, uh, the life points you were going to spend on something else anyway seems like a really fair deal to me. There is a specific reason why people are so hard on playing heroes all the time. <laughs> because they have a large number of good cards at their disposal and there's a tons of different ways you can build the deck and they all kind of move they kind of move like smooth like butter as much as i like to make fun of heroes like they're actually really a versatile group of monsters and you can do some fun things with them a big reason due to cards like this all right guys that was generation force this is actually a fantastic set. I, I actually forgot how good this set is. There is a solid number of really powerful cards in this set and cards that frankly still see use every once in a while even to today. I also want to take a minute before we go to remind you guys that I have a second channel enemy controller. Over there Ryan and I are doing let's plays of various games. Two of the most popular right now are my Pokemon let's plays of Fire Red and Pokemon Shield. I love me some Pokemans. I know that seems sacrilegious in a Yu-Gi-Oh video but I do like other other things. So if you guys are interested, please go check that out. I'm, I'm actually having some fun over there. But with that, remember guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Wait just a moment. I can see you were about to click the subscribe button. Was I right? Tell me I was right. I was right, right? My Millennium Eye lets me see everything, including these other videos by Davy Boy. Don't be a stranger. You will always be welcome in my Toon World.